In the last episode of Carter Auto Restyling, this abandoned and neglected 1966 GMC got a previously enjoyed crate motor and T5 transmission. Unfortunately, disaster struck. Horrific grinding noise from the driveline. And things went from bad to even worse when the ongoing feud with famous social media influencer Shed by the Tracks got personal. Yeah, is this Carter's hairstyling? Yeah. Hey, that radiator you sold me is junk. You mean the one I told you was complete garbage and you shouldn't waste your time with? The top's missing off of it. It's got a big hole in the side of it. It's ceased to be. It's passed on. It's an X radiator. So what are you going to do about it? Will the GMC drive for the first time in 2,000 years? Will the Shed by the Tracks feud get resolved? Stay tuned to the end to find out, maybe. Well, while we're waiting for our controversial drive shaft, I thought it'd be a good time to do some uh, of our interior upgrades here. And uh, what's on the agenda here is to toss out this seat. This seat makes me want to throw up every time I look at it. Not only is it hideous, but it's also incredibly uncomfortable for my skeletal alien body type. Cuts off the circulation of my legs. It hurts my back. It's like sitting on a church pew. There's no cushion at all. It's just, it's a terrible thing and I hate it. I really hate it. I'm not knocking anybody who has this seat in their truck or likes these seats. We all like our different things. That's totally fine. I'm just saying for me, I hate it. This truck, when I bought it, I was 13 years old and it didn't have a seat in it, I think. And uh, this seat was 30 bucks. So I reluctantly uh, went for it and I hated it then. And I haven't grown to like it one bit. Every time I look at it, I hate it more. I hate this, I hate this bracket here. This bracket is terrible. It's all just awful. It's a terrible, terrible thing. And I, I can't stress enough how much I despise this seat. So today is finally the day when we get to say goodbye, you miserable thing. Can't remember if I mentioned it or not yet, but I, I hate this seat. Those of you who are just tuning in, I hate to see this in this truck. That was a bit of a fight there, but we got her. Oh yeah, this is more the seating position I was after. Not only do we have style now, but we've also got comfort. So there's a giant hole in the floor here from the old Hurst three-speed floor shifter and so I had to patch it up so I painstakingly hand fabricated this sheet metal patch panel in here but the problem is is I don't know how to weld but this needs to all be sealed up so we don't get water inside probably. So I read online about this product that's called seam sealer that's supposed to like seal up joints and stuff on vehicles but then I found out that you have to actually go to the store and buy it that's really scary. Good news is though that I have this space age product here that's guaranteed to last 10,000 years or until it cracks and falls out, whichever comes first. So we're going to use this stuff instead. This truck has a lot of sentimental value, so it's really important to me to do this job right, you know? I don't want to take any shortcuts that might come back and haunt me later on. Astronauts actually use this to uh, repair some collision damage on the International Space Station a couple years back when it uh, backed into some space debris. So I figure if it's good enough for Buzz Alderton, it's uh, good enough for Kyle. Best part about this uh, stuff is if you have any product left over, you can actually just uh, use it to fix your rust holes here. That way nothing gets wasted. Now 
Not only is this product an excellent substitute for welding, it also makes a pretty convincing uh, thread locker. My dad built this shifter for the truck years ago, so I think it should probably stay with the truck, I guess. Might have to change the angle of it. Um, originally, when it had the three speed in here, it was kind of angled more towards here, but so I might have to bend it up a bit. But I guess we'll see. We will see. So I was just goofing around earlier about sitting on the floor. Uh, we're actually gonna be running these Super Trick custom bucket seats that I found on the side of the road. Stuff people throw away, am I right? clarify here that I'm not uh, knocking anybody uh, I'm just saying that in my truck I don't want this seat I don't like it in my truck it might be totally fine in your vehicle and I'm not gonna go up to anybody and tell them I don't like something about their vehicle I think that's pretty weak we all see the world differently and we all see things differently so just cuz I don't like something somebody else might like it or I don't know uh, maybe somebody did something to their car that uh, it's not my thing, but they may have had a good reason for it. Maybe that's all they could afford. Maybe they actually like it. Or maybe they used a part that was an old family heirloom. Maybe the seat was passed down from generation to generation, so it means something to them. I don't know that, so I'm not going to tell somebody else how to build their car. I see it all the time at uh, car shows and stuff, and especially online, but it happens in person too, where somebody will just go up to somebody and tell them, everything they don't like about their car or how they would have done it differently and you know you don't know why they did it that way so if if you don't know unless you were there and you understand what was going on then it's better to just keep your mouth shut i think another thing i found is uh people they uh they're gonna do whatever they want to do anyways they really don't care what anyone else thinks so you know it's just a it's a waste of oxygen to uh to do that and you know again you'll want to discourage somebody from from building whatever vision they have in their mind if they're out there working on stuff and building stuff and making it happen then you can't really can't really discourage them for that so i just thought we'd uh our public service announcement here i know for me there's a whole pile of stuff that i don't like on my own vehicles and uh for example i don't like these gauges here uh, there was a time when I was a young fella, I used to build a lot of model cars and uh, I thought white faced gauges were cool. Like every time it came with the white faced decals for the gauges, I'd put that in the model cars and then I thought, oh, that'd be cool on my truck. Uh, I grew out of that pretty fast, but um, this, I don't care enough about to change. They work and gauges are expensive. So I, for the fact that this is a work truck, I'm just going to live with it. If I want to... Uh, buy gauges for something. I need gauges for my 36 over there. So I'd rather spend money on buying gauges for that than uh, wasting money replacing stuff that works in this truck. I don't like the hole it's cut in the dash either, but uh, reason for that is there was already a hole there uh, butchered into it. And at the time uh, you couldn't buy the nice little patch panel with the radio delete thing and go try find a a good one at a wrecking yard ain't gonna happen that hasn't been hacked up already so that's there and uh, again probably something I'm never gonna bother fixing I gotta say uh, after all the work we've done with the engine swap and the t5 swap uh, the uh, upgrade that I'm most actually excited about is just having the original seat back in this truck I've always wanted to have an original seat in it and that day has finally come uh, it's just uh, to me it just looks better 
uh, even though the upholstery doesn't match anything. Um, eventually, I guess uh, if I have a disposable income, I'll reupholster it. But I think just even having, just having the right seat in it, just uh, uh, to me, anyways, in my brain, it uh, it's so much better. For me, this is actually a lot more comfortable than the other seat, and uh, I figure some engineer uh, back in the '60s all kind of engineered all of this to kind of work together and and be somewhat comfortable. And I don't really see any way that it could be any better with anything else in it other than the, the factory seat. So that was our. Uh, as you can tell, I'm I'm quite uh, excited about having the original seat in this. I did go back and uh, re-bend the angle of the shifter so it's more uh, vertical. Before it was like way back here and it would jam my elbow into the seat so that wasn't going to work. That is still kind of a bit too tall now. Originally with the three speed uh, shift linkage it was all kind of down further towards the floor so it was down here. And uh, But now now that it's in here it's it's higher up just because of the, the, the way the shift thingy is on the t5 so it could stand to be shortened a couple inches but i'm just sick of uh fiddling around with this thing now that i'm just going to live with it for now if it gets to be too obnoxious like this then i can always go back and shorten it if i don't have anything better to do well uh, i just got our wildly controversial drive shaft back from the drive shaft shop i just wanted to say thanks to everyone in the last video who uh left comments and suggestions on our drive shaft situation. I realize now that I didn't do a good job uh, in the video of explaining why this isn't going to work. This two piece drive shaft out of the Chevy with trailing arms. Trailing arms. These uh, Chevy pickups uh, with the trailing arm suspension. Um, there's very limited fore and aft movement of the differential because differential is fixed it's at a fixed point here and a fixed point here so this limits our movement this way so GM came up with this design here which this is just a uh, it's a bearing pressed on the end here there's no slip yoke on here there's a slip yoke at the transmission but there's no slip yoke here and what takes up any fore and aft movement is actually just this rubber piece that's encapsulated here and which for i guess a stock application it uh, works fine i guess uh, at least according to gm the problem with this design is that once the limits of the rubber are exceeded then all of your forces are going to be applied to this thin sheet metal area here and I'll uh, put some pictures in here of what happens problem is is that I was trying to make this work in a truck with leaf springs and like I measured the length I measured the u-joints I checked everything I thought it was gonna work I bolted it all in it looked like it was gonna work but as soon as I went to drive it then it became apparent that it, it's not gonna work at all and then I started doing the research and figuring out the hows and the whys of why it won't work and the thing with the leaf springs compared to this is they allow for a lot more for an aft moon because leaf springs they twist and they bend and and all that they're not a the axle is not fixed solidly to the frame so that then it's putting a lot of uh, additional strain on this piece here which it was not designed to handle and then it will fail if there's no amount of shimming or bending or cutting and welding or twisting or whatever that's ever going to make it work properly because it's the wrong part for the leaf spring application and you know I could weld reinforcements on here and make it stronger and shim it and whatever but as soon as you reinforce one area then the stress just gets transferred on to the next weakest link and you just keep doing that and it's it's never going to be right. The thing with GM is that they're notoriously cheap. If they thought there was any way that they could make this style carrier bearing 
and this style drive shaft working a truck with leaf springs, they would have done it. If they can save two cents per vehicle, they're gonna do it. So uh, that kind of tells me a lot right there. Now they did come up with a two-piece drive shaft. Some of the leaf spring trucks did have a two-piece drive shaft, but what they did is they used a, uh, a more reinforced carrier bearing with like a pillow block, and then they added an extra slip joint into the drive line, and that allowed for that extra movement but uh, my GMC originally came with a one-piece drive shaft. So that's why I decided to put a one-piece drive shaft back in. I do want to say a special thanks though to a couple of our viewers. Um, Scott uh, Davison, uh, he reached out to me and he had a drive shaft, a two-piece drive shaft out of his GMC which had the proper slip joint and he had the right bracket for the cross member. He had everything and he offered it to me for free, uh, which is just unbelievably generous. Um, at that point I had already, uh, well on my way to having a new drive shaft built and, uh, he's in the U S somewhere. I, uh, well, I won't say where he is because you know, he might not want people to know, but, uh, shipping up to me, uh, it would have cost, uh, just about, near as much as the new drive shaft would have, but just the fact that he would offer that, uh, I was pretty, uh, well, thank you Scott for, for that offer. Um, much appreciated. I also want to say thank you to Paul McNair, who's been one of our patrons since the start. And he also reached out to me and he actually offered to pay for the new drive shaft. And I, I was pretty blown back in my seat by that offer um, I couldn't accept uh, because this is just a problem that I, I created for myself but uh, just the thought uh, you know that he would uh, offer that uh, let me uh, well, I don't even know what to say but uh, thank you so much Paul uh, you folks are just uh, just way too kind to me I guess I, I certainly don't deserve it for the amount of miles I put on this truck I will never ever have to do anything with this drive shaft again. It's, I won't have to think about it. I, you know, the only wear item on it is the U-joints and, and possibly the, the slip yoke, which again, the amount of miles I put on this, I really can't see how that's ever gonna be an issue. So we're done here. This truck came with a one piece drive shaft in 1966 and it lasted for almost 60 years. So that's what's going back in it. This is the right drive shaft for it and that's the way it's gonna be. video I guess I don't know uh, this truck just has a PPG boxy primer on it and it's doing a good job of protecting the metal underneath but it has no UV protection whatsoever so it's just completely chalked and baked out so there's not really anything I can do with it I, I have one little thing I can do that'll make it look good for the video and for a week or so but it's it is what it is you can see 
just how chalked up and oxidized it is. So again, there's nothing we can do to make it like long-term look better other than paint it, but that's not happening, at least not uh, today. Just using this stuff here, body shop friendly. All it is is just uh, rebadged uh, Gibbs, I think. Um, at the time when I bought this years and years ago, I had a bare metal Model A, so I bought a. I couldn't find anybody who would ship Gibbs to Canada, uh, but these guys shipped me a uh, Troy Trapania, I think his name is. Uh, Anyways, they were selling this as like a, in a case, so they shipped this to Canada. I bought like, I don't know how much was in a case, but uh, this was my last one left, unfortunately, but um, it didn't cause any paint issues with the, the Model A I had when I went to paint it. So I guess uh, spraying it on isn't really hurting anything, unlike the WD-40 and linseed oil and other crap that people put on. Unfortunately, this is only really temporary. Uh, it only holds up for a couple days and then it'll just revert back to its natural state of uh, decay. Uh, what really needs to happen is this needs to get some paint on it, uh, which obviously ain't going to happen this year uh, or probably next year, but maybe uh, the year after. Oh, we'll see. I'm not looking for it to be, you know, a nice paint. I just want something on it so it's protected. It's kind of... The epoxy's been doing a good job, but it's just so so baked out now, it's kind of on its last legs, I think. It's not really doing what it's supposed to anymore. It's past its uh, best before date as ceased to be. And I just want a, a simple, you know, nothing fancy paint job on it just to protect it, but even that is still a month's worth of work and probably over two grand worth of materials and stuff. And I'm not set up for painting here, so, We'll see how this uh, whole YouTube thing goes. If it picks up, then maybe we'll uh, invest in some uh, better equipment and we can uh, do a scuff and shoot on this, which again, that's still a couple months worth of work to get that, uh, get it looking half decent. 
I'd like to see this thing uh, back in the original light blue color that it was originally. Again, this is all just, you know, nonsense right now. I've been talking about that for years. The only thing that's changed is kind of my, uh, my expectations of the finished product have, uh, I've lowered my standards a fair bit because this is a work truck and it's gonna stay a work truck. So the only thing behind painting it would just be to, to keep it a little more protected, I guess. It also kind of has to look like something too. So there's gonna be a fair amount of body work still to do to actually get it. Uh, so it just doesn't look like, I don't want it laser straight, but I don't want it to look like total garbage either. So we're now going for the ultimate reliability test, which is will it make it to Canadian Tire and back? Um, overall, I'm fairly pleased with the outcome of the work that we did. The engine that we put in is quite uh, noisy, um, but uh, we're just gonna run it. It is better than the engine that I took out, so it seems to pull good and it's doesn't seem to be smoking or burning any oil or anything like that so I'm just gonna run it and uh, we'll see how it goes I guess if I get another year or two out of it then uh, better than the truck just sitting in my backyard I uh, this was kind of my first uh, car I guess I bought this when I was 13 years old so uh, and I need a I need a work truck or a shop truck whatever you want to call it and so I figured, you know, instead of going out and buying another truck and trying to fix it up and whatever, uh, I've got this, it, it needs an engine. So we decided to swap the engine in and also put the T5 transmission in it out of the other truck that we had. So um, I think uh, that was a, a good decision there. The only unexpected expense was the drive shaft having to be custom made, which I mean, they're I guess we could have saved a few bucks doing things one way or the other there, but I think in the end I'm, I'm happy to spend a couple bucks on a drive shaft and uh, it's still, the cost of the drive shaft is still cheaper than a uh, monthly payment on a new truck and this truck will do everything that I need it to, which is just all the occasional thing. The other uh, expense that we're going to have going forward here is the, uh, the tires are of course now starting to fall apart. They're over 10 years old, still got lots of tread, but uh, just the way it is. So I think uh, we'll be able to get another season out of them, hopefully, but uh, we'll definitely be spending money on new tires before we go too far with this thing. But I think just for driving back and forth uh, to wherever I need to go for now, the short distances, uh, they'll hopefully keep air in them for a little bit longer. I don't have money for new tires right now.
as someone who's not a big fan of modern upgrades I was pretty hesitant to do the T5 swap in this I really like the way the original 3-speed feels and I know that they did make an overdrive for these for the, the, the original 3-speed you could get an overdrive but I figured seeing as how I've got this here now there goes the remains of the original wiper blade anyways I figure seeing as how I've got it here now and uh, I, I just swap it in and go for it so that's what I did it does feel you know more dainty than the original uh, three speed I guess did but again um, now that I've driven it a bit on the highway uh, with the overdrive I gotta say uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased with this this was a good uh, a good upgrade uh, I guess a good trade-off or whatever uh, with the original three speed on the highway and I checked the rear end has 390 gears and I was just you know screaming on the highway doing 55 was like over 3000 rpm and uh, now with the uh, T5 it does uh, you know it'll do 60 at about 2200 to 2300 rpm it will do uh, and it's still got enough to do 65 70 if I want to but uh, I think with the condition of this engine and everything else and the truck just seems to be happiest doing 60 so I, I think uh, I think I'll be fine with that but it is nice to have the, that extra little bit there just because I find uh, if anybody's going slower than you know 70 on the highway everybody just lines up on your back bumper and they won't pass you and uh, until you turn on the left turn signal because you got to make your turn off on the left and then suddenly that everybody will start passing you and then you're trying to frantically merge into a bunch of idiots in modern vehicles and it's just uh, it's always very stressful so this just immensely helped the drivability of it and again I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere I really don't need to arrive somewhere one minute earlier so speed uh, doesn't really interest me but uh, just having the option uh, of having this thing to be a little more drivable with the RPMs down, uh, I think it'll help hold the center together and and uh, and just just make it a little less of a, a dangerous thing on the highway. I used to have a 49 Chevy and it had like a V8 and and modern overdrive in it and everything, and it would do you know 80 on the highway without even uh, breaking a sweat. But the thing is, the other thing I found with these old vehicles is it don't matter how fast you go on the highway, everybody still wants to pass you. And if you're going really fast, then all they do is they pass you and then immediately slam on their brakes. So I think just being able to do 60 to 65 is, is a comfortable speed. And no matter what, people are going to be idiots. So there's no point in trying to go any faster because as soon as you get into the city, the first red light, uh, they're all lined up next to you anyways all the people who passed you so people are just idiots so there's no point in trying to fight that I'll just uh, cruise along at uh, speed that's comfortable was just 99% talking. Fact of the matter is I've been saving up this seat ramp for like the last 18 years. I've been bottling up inside and I tried telling my cats about it and they wouldn't listen to me. I tried yelling at some random people on the street. They called the cops. Apparently that's illegal. So ranting and raving to you folks is kind of the last resort here. Also there's a whole pile of controversy about the drive shaft situation in the comments in the last video. And you know, as much as I appreciate all your comments and suggestions and things, and I try to reply and 
to as many of them as I can. You know, it's not easy, but I try just because I think that's the that's a polite thing to do, right? You know, so I try, but you know, I get the same 20 suggestions or whatever, or comments or ideas. You know, I gotta write out the same thing 20 times. I don't get paid for that. I will get paid for videos. So I make a video about talking, I get paid for it. He told me he was a big deal on YouTube, you know, before the cocaine habit kicked in. I'm not proud of that, but it is what it is. Please keep the comments coming though, I do I do like reading them. Sorry if I didn't reply to you or you had ignored or whatever. I, I get so many comments, I can't possibly keep up with them all. But like I said, I don't get paid for replying to them. You know, I just kind of try because it's polite, but useless as it may be, I get uh, paid for these videos. The longer the video is, the more yakking, the more I get paid. I'd like to have every video be a full restoration, but then we only have like one video every 10 years. So we got to do something to fill in the gap, you know? Anywho, next video is going to be doing the welding on this. Well, not all of it, but we're going to get started on it. There's going to be a whole pile of welding on this truck and banging and, and messing around and making mistakes. So, uh, sorry for the last couple of videos kind of not being very good, but these videos will be like 1% better and if you made it to the end thanks so much uh appreciate all of you and we'll sign off now